show 7.30. So I will call the meeting for September 16th, 2020 to order. Uh, first item on the agenda is the consent agenda. And uh, we are not going to, we're gonna pull the minutes out because those are not ready. But uh, we have warrants PR2105, uh, AP2011, AP2011S, AP2012, and AP2012S. We have a uh, vacation accrual amendment for Deputy Town Administrator David Nixon, six months accrual as opposed to 12 months accrual. Select board will vote on that. We have a DPW labor truck driver filling two empty positions, which is uh, Jebediah Jonesmeyer and Julio Colon. Uh, town mechanic permanent appointment, Jason Hall, um, who's filling the position temporarily at the moment. We have a municipal hearing officer, enter municipal agreement, select board will sign, and cultural council resignation, Wayne Abercrombie. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is John not here? Oh, there you are. I'm sorry, John. Yeah, I just, you're, test, you're testing my Zoom skills. You sent it to the other, not the town uh, website. Just gonna, uh, yes, uh, I except for DPW stuff. John, you got a lot of noise coming across. Just so you know. Yeah, the windows open and cars are driving by. So. All right. So next item of business is uh, public comments. Um, so we ask that uh, you limit your comments to three minutes or less. And uh, we have 15 minutes allotted for this. And I know that Ms. Levinson, I believe, is here for public comments. So um, Jennifer, can you unmute her? I believe she's trying to, there you go. All right, oh, go ahead now. Okay, thank you. So my name is Deborah Levinson. I live on Holly Road and I've been a Hadley resident for 16 years. I am making public comment tonight concerning the select board's decision against hiring a COVID ambassador. After watching a recording of the board's discussion and reading the Gazette article about this issue, I'm concerned about the decision and about the process that led to that decision. In my opinion, the board was highly disrespectful to our elected officials on the Board of Health. Instead of working in a collegial fashion with them, some members of the board, and also the representative from the Finance Committee, appeared confrontative and more intent on micromanaging the decision rather than coming to the best possible solution. The Board of Health proposed hiring a part-time temporary ambassador to help educate the community about COVID guidelines. Hadley's been doing pretty well managing this disease thanks to the work of the Board of Health and others in town, including all who are following the guidelines about wearing masks, social distancing, and so forth. But we do have problems with compliance and the risks are serious, especially as we head into the fall with schools and more businesses reopening and with flu season down the road. Hadley carries, a particular, Hadley carries a particular responsibility as our busy commercial corridor provides many vectors for COVID to be transmitted both into and out of the community. Positive professional education about wearing masks and social distancing is one important way that we can fulfill this responsibility and help protect Hadley's residents, visitors, students, workers, and businesses. This is also an issue of racial equity. We know that people of color face greater risk in the COVID-19 pandemic, and our policy should reflect Hadley's commitment to protecting everyone who lives, works, and shops in our town. Yet the select board previously voted to not allow our police, fire, and inspection departments to help enforce COVID guidelines when necessary. And now you are blocking the proposal for a COVID ambassador. 
The cost is relatively small, $3,000 for one part-time temporary position over the next four months. The, the board made its decision without even having clear information about the CARES grant or how much of that money remains. Managing the public health of our community during a widespread pandemic should be a top concern. The Board of Health needs to hire whomever they think can do the best job. It's true that COVID has added to the financial stress of towns like ours, but we elect our public officials to weigh priorities responsibly and to act with reasonable flexibility for the common good. Neighboring towns are in the process of hiring COVID ambassadors. They face the same financial pressures that we do here in Hadley, yet they are prioritizing public health. The select board discussion about the COVID ambassador in no way reflected a thoughtful consideration of public priorities or respect for the expertise and daunting work of our, of our Board of Health. I ask that you reconsider the decision about the COVID ambassador. I also ask that future select board discussions be conducted in a respectful collaborative manner with the Board of Health and all others who come here to discuss the business of this town. And I thank you very much for your attention tonight. Thank you for your comments. Is there anybody else that's here for public comments? If you are, wave at your camera or turn your camera on or raise the electronic hand. Yeah. Okay. All right, so next item of business 5.1, uh, Treasurer and Chief Financial Advisor are here, David Eisenthal and Linda Sanderson. And uh, let's see, we're going to give us the bid results for town borrowing projects and the town, the select board's access to accept the bid results and sign all the documents necessary to complete the borrowing. So Linda and David Eisenthal, I'll take it away. Right. I will. I will uh, start. Um, this week we have our bands, uh, which is a bond anticipatory note. Our bands are our short-term notes. Our bonds are the long-term ones. So we have a band coming due this week for uh, from a year ago, eight hundred seventy-seven thousand eight hundred forty-five dollars. We took out a year ago, interestingly, at one point seven five percent, which was great at the time and. Um, it was for school and town equipment, a miscellaneous things, about a dozen different things, and also included a, a chunk of money in there, uh, almost four hundred of three hundred seventy thousand for uh, this, the library. So this week, as we're as it's coming due, we are paying down a bit over four hundred thousand of the old equipment, and we are renewing it into two different bands. We are renewing uh, 370,000 of it into a short-term borrowing, really just two months to get us into November um, and where it will get rolled into the bond. And, um, and next, David, David Eisenthal will explain more about that. But the rest, of our, uh, the rest of the current note is going to be a fully paid down except for about 100, except for $100,000. And we're going to roll that into a note that's going to go a full year to next September. Um, both of those uh, notes, when they went out to bid, came in at 0.75%, uh, which is great. Uh, we just, uh, just in June, our last ban, we did at 1.3%. So we've seen it go from 1.75, 1.3, right, to 0 0.75 in, uh, in a year. So uh, this is a really good time for us to be doing this. The uh, borrowing um, has worked out very well for us. Um, you actually really did already sign the band notes because they had to be in. We had to FedEx it down to Boston. So we've uh, had enough of you come in, the select board members, to sign and, and take care of what we needed to get the uh, official documents down to Boston. But it's always been our, um, our habit to come and talk to the select board and each time that we do one of these renewals to let you and to let the taxpayers know what's going on with our borrowing. So it's a little bit of a status update there too. So yeah, both of those came in at 0.75%. Um, the, uh, the one for 370,000 is with Munson Savings Bank. This is the first time I have um, 
I've had a, a note with them. And for uh, our first time last year, we had Adams Community, and they are back in this year for, uh, they have our $100,000 note. So they are going to um, handle that for us. So that is this week's business. Um, the short term, um, we have been keeping the short term ones and we do the pay down, um, Carol, and we have not had the departmental equipment. Those do not roll into bonds eventually, even though they're called bond anticipatory notes. We pay them off before they get that far. That's why every time we have a band come due, we are paying off a good chunk of uh, principal and um, we are borrowing the new items. So very often our new borrowing of that uh, is about the same as what we're paying off, but it's, it's, it's diff different items. And we're only about a year out from paying off all of our equipment within the borrowing, a year or two within paying all the short-term borrowing of equipment. So it's been a good plan for us. These larger ones, however, do go into the bonds. And uh, we have David Eisenthal here from Unibank. Fiscal Advisory Services. He is our, and has been for quite a while, our Chief Financial Advisor and has been a great help in setting up the strategy for what we're doing with bonds. Thank you, Linda. Mr. Chair, um, I think what I'm going to do is sort of step back and talk about uh, sort of long term how this process has unfolded. Uh, this, it's really started, uh, this multi building series of capital projects started following a bond financing that happened in November of 2014. Uh, within the year following that, um, some serious discussions were happening within the town regarding a new senior center, uh, fire substation, and library. My involvement in this started in a serious way in the fall of 2016 with uh, many meetings, analysis, and discussions of um, how to approach the uh, strategy and uh, logistics for temporary and permanent financing of these projects. The plan that we all developed was designed to maintain bank qualification, which is a benefit for tax-exempt issuers that issue $10 million or less in a calendar year. So we uh, managed the borrowing so that the town never borrowed more than $10 million in a calendar year. We tried to match project cash flow, not leaving uh, much in the way of idle proceeds uh, around. And then um, probably the most important uh, factor was to meet certain debt service and tax impact targets, which I believe that we have met over the past uh, number of years. Um, the town meetings to approve the senior center, fire substation, and library started in the fall of 16 and went through 2018. Um, the temporary borrowing fund project costs for these major capital projects started in 2017, uh, and the town executed its first bond issue, permanently financing about $8.1 million of the costs of these projects last year in, 20, in July of 2019. Now, uh, you all may know that as part of this issue, the town uh, did a presentation and tour for uh, analysts from S&P Global Ratings. Um, as a result of this uh, process, the town received an upgrade in its rating from uh, AA plus to AAA. The, uh, I'll mention that last year's issue, the July 2019 issue, is being amortized starting this fiscal year. The first principal payment is actually in January of 2021. Uh, the last payment of, on the July 2019 issue will be in fiscal year 2049. And the all-in rate on that nearly 30-year borrowing was about 2.78%. We had initially been projecting 5% rates on permanent borrowing. So I think the town saw some, uh, we were quite conservative, and so the town saw some savings compared to what those earlier projections were. Uh, since July of 2019, the town has engaged uh, additional temporary borrowing. Uh, all of this now, the part that's going to be uh, financed in the bond issue uh, matures in November. Uh, the plan is to permanently finance approximately 7.42 million 
uh, of these costs, uh, concluding the financing of the, of the local share of the major projects. Um, we may see, um, it's possible we will see state aid anticipation notes for a portion of the library uh, going forward, depending on the timing of grants relative to uh, fiscal year end for, for the next year or two. So that's a, that we may see additional financing of that nature. The planned amortization on this new bond issue uh, would run from fiscal 2022 to fiscal 2050. And I think it's safe to say that uh, just as we've seen with the short term issues, we expect rates to be lower than uh, we saw in July of 2019. The schedule here is that we're uh, scheduled to have uh, bids for the bonds on October 15th. Um, the board would be asked to take a vote on uh, October 21st. Um, actual execution of the documents uh, would could take place at some other time, given the likelihood that we're looking at a virtual meeting uh, at that point. Um, I will point out that for these notes, a vote is not, for the vote for the bans that the town is issuing now, there is not a need for a vote of the board. Uh, that would be up to the pleasure of the board, but a vote will be needed to award and execute the bond issue in October. And then settlement of the bonds would occur uh, on October 29th. Mr. Chair, through you, I'd be happy to answer any questions. No, I'm just... Uh, just I thank you for all your work. Um, obviously, the uh, the estimates, you know, being conservative starting off, have uh, done pretty well as far as estimating the uh, the cost of our borrowing, and we've done, you know, very well compared to what we were expecting. So that's a, that's great. Do you have any idea how much we've saved just on these bands uh, over the time we've we've had these bands based on what we were projecting, just ballpark? You know, that's hard to say. I could go back and look and get you an answer on that, though. No, I mean, I'm happy to do that. But I think it's a substantial amount of money, and I think that you've been under those uh, the targets. Uh, I think you've been substantially under the targets that were initially uh, put forth in the planning process. Right, in, in, a, in a way, we weren't saving year to year because remember, we, we did the raise and we kept it at that flat level. And so rather than, um, yes, the, the town has definitely saved money uh, by putting more money into principal than in interest, but in actuality, it's, making, it's been making the same payments each year. But what we're going to see is the dip is going to come way sooner than we were expecting because in the short run, uh, rather than uh, have it go down, we have been accelerating paying the um, these uh, short the short term borrowings um, that we originally thought were going to each be going out, you know, three to five years and perhaps even longer. But in actuality, we're going to have them paid off within the next two years. That's even unexpected because even at the lower rates, um, we were expecting to have more added, more more short term more. Um, debt exclusion borrowings for equipment, but we have not passed a debt exclusion for, we didn't pass them last year and we don't have an option to pass them this fall because of the COVID situation. So we are probably are going to see um, a drop from these borrowings um, in fiscal 22, maybe, um, I, think it's, I think it's 22 and maybe 23, but somewhere in there. So we're going to see it come down and still be well within the um, within the cap that we had talked about originally. So are we, this is Joyce, are we looking at um, the time payment on the library grant coming in and is that going to affect it? If it doesn't come in, it needs to, I, as I understand, the library needs to have a sign off uh, from the planning board and the fire chief, I believe, um, before the money is released from that grant. Is that true, or how, how's that playing into it at all? I, I actually met with the library. I went to their Zoom meeting last week, and um, in order, so we've received the three payments and spent them. Um, they're annual payments in over five years, and this fall would be, this fiscal year is the fourth payment, and no matter what, we wouldn't receive the fifth, I mean, did I... 
this falls the fourth payment and no matter what we wouldn't receive the fifth payment until the next fiscal year so each year has a marker not only is it year four but you have to meet a certain standard so we've had no trouble the first three years and the fourth one we won't have trouble meeting it either but it's a certificate of occupancy so um so and which has which has been delayed i don't know how much it's going to be delayed by what's going on with the library but I'm, i don't think it'll be delayed past this fiscal year um if we have the cash flow to cover we weren't planning to get a um we weren't planning to borrow against um un unreceived grants until the end of this fiscal year if we need it sooner we can we can do that if we ran short of cash for any other reasons um, we should have enough, but then again, we don't know with our revenue if there's going to be some sudden change this year. If I might, I would say that the uh, uh, likelihood is that the given what we know, and Hadley traditionally has had very ample uh, liquidity, mm -hmm. I think the issue is um, if there is, a, from an accounting point of view, a capital projects deficit, that is to say the town has already spent money for the library project that is to be reimbursed by the library grant and that library grant hasn't been received as of june 30th let's say 2021 or 2022 mm -hmm. the town might need to do for accounting reasons a brief and it could be as little as a month long uh note issue state aid anticipation note issue that would just carry uh plug that deficit at June 30th of the respective fiscal years. And it could be a uh, one month each year uh, note just really to plug the balance sheet. Um, but I don't anticipate unless there's a major change in the uh, liquidity position of the town, I would not expect that that would need to be done for cash flow reasons. And I reminded the I reminded the library that we we received the first two payments before we spent any of their money. So we actually had their first two years of grants as 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 our mm, cushion for the town. We have the money. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. paid. They receive interest for it because the money is in an account. They, so they get the interest. And if we were to have to pay interest on uh, on having to borrow a year ahead. And as, as David was pointing out, uh, David Eisenthal, was, it's not even for a long term. We just have to get from one fiscal year to the next. Um, I'm pretty sure we still will have received more interest than we will need to pay at, at these interest rate levels. So I, I don't see it as a big problem. I don't see it as a problem. So we have options. That's, that's what it boils yes, down. Yes, absolutely. All right. Does anybody yeah. on the uh, select board have any questions for Linda or David Eisenthal? I just have a quick question is with everything that we're looking at with lower interest rates, is there any, um, anything in looking at refinancing some debt we have that might be older, um, that might be at a higher interest rate? Is there anything along those lines that we could take advantage of right now? Funny that you mentioned that. We have been looking at the very issue that I mentioned when I started talking with November 2014 issue, which is callable uh in 2022 redeemable in 2022 um and uh, right now our judgment was that um the size and rates on that issue did not lend itself well to a refinancing now but we are keeping our eye on that issue so that if uh that changes uh we can advise the town accordingly. And one thing I'll, also I will say is that under the tax code amendments that were adopted at the end of 2017, uh, if a municipality does a refinancing that is more than 90 days before a payoff of bonds, it can no longer be done as a tax exempt issue. It has to be done on a taxable, federally taxable basis which means that the rates will be, would be higher. We have seen some uh, municipalities in Massachusetts make use of taxable advance refundings, but I, uh, my judgment in this case was for this particular issue at this time, a taxable advance refunding would not be uh, very economic, but we will keep our, an eye on that. Okay. 
Thank you. Anybody else have questions for uh, Linda or David? Okay. Well, thank you. I want to for, thank them. Uh, thank oh, them very you. much for all their work. We appreciate it very much after all these years. You're very welcome. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you both and have a good night. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, um, Actually, I apologize to Carolyn. I skipped over her on the agenda. It's what happens when I flip back and forth between screens. So uh, I, I missed the introduction of our new town administrator, Carolyn Brennan. So Carolyn, now's your chance. <laughs> great. Well, thank you. Um, it has been a great 17 hours. I think now it's at 17 hours of being the new town administrator. Um, I have to thank David and Jennifer. They have been incredibly supportive. Um, Jennifer has answered questions that I've asked three times and has, has helped me with a lot of the, the technical th stuff of getting passwords and stuff like that. So thank you. And thank you to David. He has um, sat with me for most of the time, um, learning so much and um, had a great opportunity to meet with the department heads. And at that point, I gave them a little introduction that I can do right now real briefly. Um, I added a little bit of a per personal background as well. But um, I think I might have mentioned it a few week, a few Board of Selectmen meetings ago um, with you all about just uh, my background being in municipal government for over 30 years, being involved in my own town as well on FinCom and in our uh, Board of Selectmen and um, just loving municipal government. And when I was looking for a job, had, uh, Hadley really had that, uh, that characteristic of everything, of um, the commercial, the residents, all the agricultural, that, that really was a good fit for me. So I, I thank you very much for trusting me to be here. Um, and just a little bit of personal background. I have three children that are all grown now and two grandchildren. Um, and I am in the middle of downsizing to a very small house, which that's gonna be a challenge, but still in Wilbraham. It's been a beautiful commute, a commute I did many years ago when I actually worked at Shady Lawn Rest Home when I put myself through college at UMass. So um, it's kind of a nice com uh, coming around um, 30 years later. Um, but I'm excited to be here. I'm learning a lot. And I just had a, it was very nice to meet all of the department heads. And I hope to get out of the Zoom arena so that I can go meet with them one-on-one -on -one in the next couple of weeks. But it's, it's really been a... Um, a mixture of excitement, nervousness, and um, uh, just uh, just feeling very welcome. So I wanted to thank everybody, including the department heads, um, for making me feel so welcome. So I'm excited. I'm excited to be a part of the community. Well, thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. All right. So we have a six o'clock appointment for uh, 6.3, which is Young Men's Club request. And I believe Johnny Mitch Jr. is here to talk about this request. So Johnny, if uh, you're unmuted, so. Yeah, good, good afternoon. So one of the things um, the Young Men's Club we would like to do is, I'm sure you guys are aware every year we have the UMass parties, the Spring Fest and October Fest. This year we kind of took a hit with the pavilion and bar being shut down for the year. Um, but one of the, events that we have been toying around with for the past few years is doing like a country fest, like similar to the Hatfield bonfire. Um, <clears throat> we will not have a bonfire. It'll just be probably about five bands going from probably two o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon till 10 o'clock at night. Um, but the only issue we have is parking. So I want to reach out to the town and see if they would be willing to partner up with that so we could do parking at either the school hopkins academy or on the west street common and we would supply buses to uh transport back and forth for the participants um this way the town could make some money on it you know whether it be through the well like the booster club or the schools if they want to do the parking you know we do have other avenues we could park and shuttle but want to reach out to the town first. Okay. And so when are you thinking about doing it in the spring or? Yeah, this would be June 19th. Okay. 
so we got some time. Uh, what is the rest of the select board? Uh, obviously, we're just talking in general terms now. What do you think about allowing the Young Men's Club to use uh, a town parking lot of some sort? And David Nixon, how would that work with um, you know the booster club or the schools raising money through that effort? Is that a possibility? So uh, if we're going to have a lot of uh, parking at the schools, we need to coordinate this with the schools. Um, there, there should we've done this in the past with the asparagus festival. Uh, where the Hop, uh, Hopkins Academy's uh, parking was used as overflow. Uh, there's obviously uh, concerns about traffic and pedestrian safety. But Mr. Mishkowski, I believe, is talking about a shuttle service. Yes. Would that be through Five Star? Most likely, we would use Five Star. Um, and you know, one thing on that, the issues we have with the Spring Fest and Fall Fest is the issues of pedestrians where they shuttle from Amherst to Hadley. So we do have a lag, um, even if there's five or six buses. So we're thinking more local. We won't have that issue. Uh, we will have on-site parking, like VIP parking, probably two to 300 cars to be able to be on our site. Okay. Anybody else have any comments or? John? I guess my biggest concern would just be, you know, where are we at in relation to COVID and that kind of thing. And then just using town property and busing, you know, we aren't busing a lot of kids right now. So just, um, you know, we'd have to be careful of the, how that would look and what kind of event the town would endorse. Um, but other than that, I mean, if, if we're uh, back to normal, so to speak, it sounds like a great idea. And John, uh, my question would be on the buses. The the Young Men's Club would be paying for the buses, right? We're not using town buses to do that. Right? We're not going to use town buses, but we'll, we can talk about that. I just wanted to talk about using the area. And however we work about the, the finance of the buses, whether it comes out of the parking, you know, we're going to have so many ticket sales. We're going to know what we're having for ticket sales. Um, and then go from there to, you know, to supply that. But yeah, the, the town won't be using any of their buses. We would, we would, you know, get the buses from five star or another vendor. Um, and then as, as was mentioned, COVID, we're well aware that we were shut down. The event won't happen if COVID is still around, you know, hopefully we are back to normal by then, but we need to secure bands um, and, and different things for the venue. Uh, to, to make this even happen. So just want to get ahead of it. Okay, John, uh, what's got it to you? Something? Yeah, I was going to say the boosters or the Mother's Club or something like that, along with the schools, would have to get involved. Uh, the Mother's Club didn't have their cleanup day this year because of COVID. Uh, I know everybody's short of funds right now, so probably be a good thing for, for some of those organizations. What kind of um, attendance are you expecting and how many parking places do you need? Well, <clears throat> we're probably going to shoot around 3,000 people. So anywhere from that, you, you figured two to four people per vehicle. That you know, based on the past attendance at the uh, uh, other parties, like the, the college party, right? Well, this is based on like the Hatfield bonfire. This is going to be at a different venue. Um, as opposed to like the, the college kids say, it's not a college party. It's people our age, David. What are you trying to say about our age, huh? I'm saying you're old like me. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anybody else have anything for John? I don't have a problem with it. I think it would be a nice thing if the COVID does get under control. It certainly would be a nice uh, uh, thing to have, you know, to kind of open up the season and make, make, it, a, make it a good party. Um, 
And again, we'll certainly watch and see what's going on at that time. And, you know, the Board of Health and everybody else with uh, fire would have to chime in on it, of course, for your permits and things. But, you know, um, you know let's just see where we all are and plan, plan to possibly have it happen. So it, it sounds like the board is generally okay with it, Johnny. So I would plan on uh, continuing your planning and then, you know, we can talk about specifics when you, you get some more detail down the line. And obviously with COVID, what, what, you know, we'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah. And I, you know, I definitely need to get the contact with the booster club to, to work with them. You know, specifically, we would like to really get this with the schools and, and help them out. I know they do their Disney trips and, and whatever we can give back for the community. I mean, we always have with the ball fields and everything else. And, you know, we really support the kids in the community. So. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. So we'll keep going here on the agenda. Um, we have a library appointment at 615. So let's knock out some of the other stuff in the meantime. Let's do 6.4, a sewer abatement for 118 Huntington Road. Uh, this requested abatement as soon as it opens. Looks like they're asking for 200 and I'm sorry, uh, $292 for a sewer abatement. The DPW has recommended against this. Uh, apparently what happened was they were doing some outside watering and whatnot. Um, they admitted that they were doing the outside watering and they just were surprised at what the total bill ended up being. So that's, they were asking for that abatement. Um, anybody have any questions for, Chris is here. Anybody have any questions? Is this typically what somebody's water bill is if they don't have a separate irrigating meter? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it, it looks like okay. um, they do not have a separate irrigation meter. Um, so they were charged sewer uh, as well as the water based on the usage. And they did admit that they used the water and the water did go through the meter. It's just, they were surprised at what the cost of that water was. Yeah, I would be too. Uh, that's unfortunate that that happened. I guess maybe a lot of people don't understand that. I'm not saying that that's uh, you know, a reason to abate it, but uh, it's unfortunate I don't know if we tell people that when they have, when they're on sewer, uh, if they don't know, was it, did she inherit this house or was repairing it or something of that nature? Yes, she was, um, she uh, did a lot of uh, planting, um, a lot of yard work. And so she planted a lot of seeds. Um, so it was a maintenance, yard maintenance. And she also admitted that uh, daily, up to three hours a day, she was watering, and that's a lot of water. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but I guess the, the rule is the rule. If we abate this one, we have to abate everybody else's too. All right. Yeah, I can make a motion that we deny the abatement. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, abstain. And yes for me as well. So 401. Okay. Moving on, let's talk about, we've got a little bit of time. Let's do uh, license renewals for 2021. Jennifer, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yes. Um, as as y'all know, um, a lot of our businesses have been closed and are slowly reopening um, restaurants and things like this. And even when they are, are opening, they're opening at a, a reduced capacity, 25% for restaurants. Um, I think that 
the select board might want to entertain the notion of offering a reduction in the yearly renewal fees for our business community. Um, this is something that a lot of towns are discussing right now um, as a way to sort of help our businesses make it till next year, you know, to keep, to keep in business. Um, I was recommending, I, I would like to recommend that y'all um, do a reduction of the fees by 25% across the board for the permits and licenses that the select board issues. That's alcohol, entertainment, common vehicular, uh, the auto dealers, and the automatic amusements. Um, it, I think it'll be helpful to them. Um, and so that's what I'm asking. I'm not asking you to make the decision tonight, um, but I, I would like you to think about it and maybe if you would take it up again in October. Anybody sounds, re sounds reasonable, I think. You know, everybody's struggling. Uh, we certainly don't want to lose our businesses. So, we, you know, we want to help them in any which way we can. I think, you know, we're all taking a cut here and there, and I know that we count on these fees. Uh, but I think we could be generous enough that we could at least do the 25%. I don't think that's unreasonable. And what I'd like that? to know what the fees are for those various licenses, so I can do a 25% calculation. Okay, um, well, they're all online, and I'm happy to email them to you. Um, but, for example, automatic amusements, common vehicular, are both $100, so they would be $75. The on-premise, all-alcohol license is $3,500. I'm not going to embarrass myself with the math, but... That's our highest. That's our highest one. Um, is the thirty-five. So it would go down from there accordingly. Okay. Thank you. And I'll also mention, Dave, if it's okay, that the business form. We are also working on a, a business form for our, our our local businesses to come together with uh, members of the select board and the town uh, departments, and also the PVPC, and um, hopefully the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce and have a moment for them to come in and find out how else we as a town can help them and uh, introduce them to a few different um, grant opportunities and such. What type of revenue are we generating with all those fees on an annual basis? Do you know, Jennifer? David Nixon, if you can correct me if I'm mistaken, but I think it's about 180,000, is that correct? Or my way off. Yeah, that's that's the total take for the select board. That includes the payment from the University of Massachusetts of sixty thousand. So typically around one fifteen December, December, I start seeing money come in into the select board uh, of about sixty thousand or thereabouts. Oh. Would be the renewals for the licenses. Um, rest is money that comes in throughout the uh, the year. So sixty thousand just for the renewals. That's about right. I can double check that figure for you, Carolyn. And I did a uh, quick analysis of your revenues to date uh, for July and August, and you're right on track for FY twenty one. Okay. And typically, that would go into free cash. Uh, it's used uh, in order to keep the tax rate low um, if there's any surplus uh, that goes into free cash. All right. Well, if uh, let's put this on the next agenda. I, it sounds like we're open to it. So if we can get some more specifics, Jennifer, and do just yeah. basically a fee schedule, and then we can buy a reduction of about 15000 and if we can just make it clear that this is a temporary reduction. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to help the businesses out, but at the same time, the town has to generate the revenue as well. So it's a temporary redu reduction for this year. Absolutely. I'll have that. They'll have the reduced fee sheet and everything for the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So it's 615. Let's talk about uh, the library for a minute here. 
Uh, it says Chief. I'm assuming that's uh, Chief Spank Mail that's on there. All right, there we go. And Tommy's here. He looks like Library Committee. Who's the uh, 978 number? That's uh, that's Patrick, Library Director. Perfect. All right. Sounds good. So um, who wants to start off? We've got a, an issue at the library. Uh, maybe the well, let's go with Tommy and uh, Chief Spanknable if you want to in introduce the issue. Tommy, I'm going to start. <laughs> so, um, just uh, we ran into an issue with the when the uh, the granite curbing was put in, uh, in, in combination with some other uh, concerns about the uh, the site. Um, as soon as I saw the granite curbing went in, I noticed it looked very narrow. Uh, it was at that point that I did the measurements of it with my deputy and with Tom, uh, the building commissioner. And we found that the north side was uh, at 18 feet and the south side at the entry uh, was at 16 feet. Um, immediately got in touch with the GC and notified him that they weren't in compliance with fire regulation. Um, uh, for the minimum of 20 feet, unless there is a request from the fire chief, to, you know, to amend that. Um, so, you know, that's that's when we realized that we had an issue. Uh, there was some other site issues with the uh, the walkway on the north side that was brought to our attention, um, and Tommy can talk about that. Uh, but then also just the concerns of not just for fire trucks, but for snow plowing and everything else, uh, just extremely tight on that side. Um, I went back through all my emails and I know there was uh, some questions about, about you know, the site plan review and all that other stuff. And I, I really looked into that and, uh, you know, I, I went back to the first meeting that I was, that I actually asked to attend was in July and I found the meeting minutes from that meeting and I had stated that we needed to, uh, this was when the school was still being, you know, was still built in the front, uh, the old hooker school. Um, and, you know, it was myself and Chris Okafer, uh, the uh, Tony Horton, Billy Kelly. Uh, we all, we all kind of went through what we were looking for, for information and, uh, we kind of st stated that we were missing some information. I hadn't received any drawings at the time. Um, and it was after that that I did receive the uh, the bid bid package. Um, and I had stated in my, in, it stated in that, uh, those meeting minutes from July 31st that I had asked about, uh, you know, uh, fire protection systems, uh, storage of dumpsters, flammables, and fire lane locations, hot works, et cetera. So um, again, the plans were given to me. It was not very clear in the drawings. I didn't pick up on the 16 foot. I didn't know what it was being constructed out of that it's granite curbing. Um, and there was, there was an analysis, not an analysis done at the time uh, for the drive through of our, our fire truck, which we normally get uh, that I've received now. Um, so that's basically how all this started. We met three times with uh, myself and Tommy, uh, the building commissioner and Chris Okafer and Scott McCarthy from the DPW. Uh, and we kind of went through and tried to put together a plan with the, uh, the uh, general contractor, Dan. And we came up with some ideas. They brought out their uh, site engineer who was doing the interior review of, of everything and uh, we came up with some ideas of how we might be able to rectify this. And uh, that's basically, uh, we passed that information along and then everything kind of went silent on that. It went back to the engineers and uh, now we're here uh, asking about this now. We had stated that we wanted this to go to the planning board as well because there's requirements for, uh, you know, the green space and also to conservation to ensure they were okay with it. And so we wanted to just make sure that everybody was on, on the same page. So I guess has the contractor or the OPM or somebody uh, agreed to cover the costs to bring them, or is that the issue here? I see Joanne's shaking her head. So. 
No, no, I don't think the, you know, just from my recalling of everything, it's, you know, they, they think that this is just basically an add on to the project that, you know, the fire chief, the AHJ on the, um, in the towns requesting and that we just have to, uh, comply with it, you know, since, since, um, they did submit the plans back in, I, Bill probably knows better than me. It looks like he's on here too, but in November of 2018, the plans were originally submitted for the project to the planning board. And those plans are essentially what was built from what I've seen and what I've heard. Um, and then there was a fire truck turn study done by the um, senior center engineer that kind of laid out a lot of this plan around the library and the fire truck, um, you know, curvature study worked in that original plan from what I've seen from them. And again, that's what I've seen from them, what I'm taking away. Um, but I'm not, uh, knee deep in this project. So it's kind of, there's a lot of information floating around. It's hard to know what's right and what's uh, wrong. I would say, because, um, you know, we have two different groups of architects, engineers on the project, planning board, fire chief, and um, building commissioner all involved on this. So it's a little confusing, all the information. So what's the dollar amount that we're talking about? Does anybody have that to, to fix it? Yeah, the, the contractor is saying, uh, I think it's around $42,000 to, yeah, $43,000 to um, do the work. So I think that's where the contention is coming in is the cost to redo the work. And, you know, we're asking the OPM to try to, and the architect on the library project to, you know, see if we can do anything better on that price. Cause it's, you know, uh, from their estimate, just a number of days of work. And it seems, seems like a lot of money for the amount of work that needs to be done. Could I, could I just clarify something because I just want to make sure everybody's aware that there was no, um, it was stated that the fire chief had reviewed the site plan. There is, there is no, there was no site plan review done by the fire department. And I can tell you that the set of drawings that I did finally get that I have behind me here, that radius drawing of the mapping of the fire truck going through the space. I don't know if that was just done recently, uh, but the plan number is not in the documents that I received. And if you look at it, they have the the engineer let me know that they had actually left the original uh, driveway, the 16 foot driveway, in there, and the truck would not be able to make the turn into the driveway. The front tire would actually have to go up and over the granite curbing. So I also looked at the site plan that included the, and we discussed this at the building committee uh, meeting yesterday. The site plan that was done by Berkshire Design that included the senior center. Uh, when they, it was kind of broken into two parts and then the planning board asked for them to put it all together into one unified piece to get a big picture. Um, I mean, I spent numerous meetings and hours with the OPM and uh, the design team to ensure that the access on the Legion side, uh, you know, they all came to me asking to ensure that we had the 20 foot access width uh, on that south side of the senior center. And that plan that we that was actually provided by the engineer just the other day, you know, it shows the 20 foot width there and then in front of the senior center as well. So that's the confusing part to me is um, it seems like, you know, half the project has it, but the other half doesn't. Um, so again, I, whether or not we missed it, there's fire regulation that's, you know, our OPM and our, and our, architect, our architect team and design team um, I gave them that code to show them, you know, what it is. And we, we really spent a lot of time to try and, you know, make some inexpensive improvements to it, uh, to make it work because there's still some areas that we just cannot get 20 feet out of. And, and I understand that and we're willing to work on that, but, um, I just feel like the, the fire department and myself are kind of being, uh, we just don't want everybody to think that we did this intentionally and are now all of a sudden throwing something else out. That's, that's not what it is. We have, um, I've been available whenever needed. Uh, I can tell you that there has been some communication concerns across the board. Uh, 
For example, the sprinkler system was installed before any plans were submitted to me for a permit. Uh, I worked through that with the contractor, the fire alarm electrician, you know, they sent me plans after, and, you know, I have all the, the backup data, the emails. So, you know, I've been really working hard to try and keep up with that project on top of two other town projects, including one that's our own that takes all our time as well, plus regular everyday business. And it just seems like there wasn't a, you know, I did everything I could to be there when they needed. Uh, and like I said, as soon as I saw the curbing, because the original site plan show, shows green space, and again, you can't tell it's granite curbing. Um, it, it's just, you know, I, I guess I, we don't really have a choice right now. It's just not big enough for us to get our trucks in. So let me go to uh, Joanne had something to say, or if Allison wants to say something for uh, as far as the library committee, just to kind of. Uh, I, I think, you know, David, we passed this along to you because we felt that it involved multiple buildings, right? And it, it, I agree with Mike, right? Like we're really unsure like where this happened and, and where to go with it. So I don't think we're, you know, blaming the fire department or we don't know, like Mike, we have layers of documents and are unsure um, where it needs to go. But we do know that we have funds, $781,000 that is not coming in because we won't get it until we get a certificate of occupancy. So we do, and that's Linda's, like Linda needs to know about floating the, the debt on that. Um, but we just felt that we would give you all the facts we had and, and move it into your um, decision-making process. Okay, no, I, I appreciate that. And I got a question for Bill, but I just wanted to say, um, you know, the reason that have OPMs and architects for these projects is because the town, the building inspector, the fire chief, we are not, you know, project managers. We, we can't afford to devote all the time that's needed on a daily basis. So that's why we hire these people. So I'm a little bit concerned that something was built not to fire code when that's really the primary responsibility of the OPM is to work on behalf of the town to make sure things are built per code. And Mr. DeWire, um, from what I saw last night, it sounded like one of your board members asked the engineer if they had asked the fire chief whether or not uh, it was okay to change a plan. And he admitted on camera, no, that's not the case. So they, they never went to the fire chief and asked to, to modify that plan. Is that kind of what came out of the meeting last night? That's my, <clears throat> my recollection. And I encourage everybody to uh, take a look at it. I think it's about uh, maybe 40 minutes in maybe a little less, but yes, the, uh, the question was, did you, did you know that the fire code required more? And the answer was yes, but we hoped we would be, uh, we'd be eligible for a waiver. Did you ask for a waiver? No. So, um, so from what I understand, talking to, uh, Tom and to the chief, the, uh, the contractor, um, I don't want to say the contractor is blameless, but the contractor did what the, what the plans called for. Um, um, it seems that the plans were flawed from the outset and no one caught it. So, so that would go back to the architect and the site engineer level. Right. And that would typically fall under their error and omissions, uh, policy normally, but uh, I assume they're trying to avoid that um, or covering the costs. But I think obviously we don't have a choice. We need to make this to code and it needs to be done. The library needs to finish so that way they can get their grant funding from the state and this can get opened. Um, my So basically what came out of the planning board last night was the planning board's okay with the slight reduction in green space because it still meets the slight plan requirements, correct? Correct. We have uh, the minimum is 20%. We have 27%. We had 27.8%. So there, that, there's not a zoning issue in that. Okay. So what came out of that meeting last night was we have a plan to go forward, but we're just looking for an okay from the select board, from the planning board and conservation, correct? 
the, the planning board did vote a um, conditional approval of the plans conditioned upon written buy-in from select board, um, from fire department, from building department. Okay. So that we, we're not going to be meeting for three weeks. So we don't want to hold it up. Uh, if everyone else is okay with it, we'll, we're, we can live with it. Okay. And, uh, Tommy, I haven't given you a chance to talk yet. Do you want to chime in on any of this? Yes, please. I, I let Mike go first, Chief, because he's been out of break from the start. Um, but as far as the cost, whenever we've met and uh, GPW, Chris has been, was great about, you know, they were supposed to put it in writing. The contractor was going to cover it is what all our assumptions were. And not only was the issue of the size, the distance, the 20 feet, there was a lot of, um, workmanship issues that we had found all of us together as far as the curbing not uh, installed in concrete um, elevations off chip uh, curbing and um, the loam wasn't even spread at that time and it just seemed basically if I didn't tell him he couldn't do the blacktop would be you know an extra bill as you know removing the blacktop or redoing it at this point and um, they should have stopped at that point and worried more on this plan as opposed to you know fixing some of the the uh, issues that and then uh, spreading all that loan. <clears throat> so, I mean, we need to get this done, but uh, in, in my mind, the, the architect, the engineer needs to cover this cost. Uh, it, it sounds like the contractor is not to blame because as was mentioned, he built per the plan. It was the plan that was flawed. So, you know, I and think we've been through this with the senior center, David. We've had meetings and meetings throughout the building of the senior center, and we've had problems. Once we met with the old PM and the engineer, which are never responsible for anything anyway, which is quite sad. But, you know, these are things that shouldn't be, you know, overlooked. This stuff needs to be done. You know, they know, they obviously, they went to the planning board and they know the rules and regulations and the chapters of the mass general laws. We did work. I remember Mike bringing the fire truck down when the gravel was still at the senior center to make sure they were going to make that from the legion around the building. You know, there's, there's really no reason why they couldn't contact the appropriate people to get this stuff straightened out before they even went and put the curbs in. I mean... Throughout this whole thing, uh, uh, Chris, um, Scott, the building inspector, and the fire chief were out there, you know, and like Tommy said, if, if they didn't say something, they would have had the pavement down. And now what are you going to do? Are you going to cold plane that whole parking lot and then move the berms? It, it was absolutely foolish. And they were in such a rush, they loaned the whole place in two days because they wanted to, they thought they were going to get away with this. So I yeah. do put a little bit of blame on the GC. Well, the GC and the OPM, the one that's watching all this. Yeah, it, you know, it's the owner's project manager. He's supposed to be working on yeah. art to make sure that these guys are doing their jobs and that we're building to code. Yeah. Uh, it should not be coming out of, in my mind, the library's budget or the taxpayer's pockets because we've already paid them to do their job, which they haven't done. Um, so I guess the, the question is, what's the, you know, how do we proceed? How do we get the library built and opened and get our grant money from the state, but at the same time, ensure that the OPM covers the cost of this? David, Carolyn, do you have any suggestions? I think the first thing we ought to do is uh, talk to uh, uh, council, find out what our legal options are. Um, and uh, I think in the same way as we approach the dike is uh, we need to finish the job and then we can figure out how we're going to apportion the blame later on. Well, we want, we want to make sure that we're going to get reimbursed um, at some point with legal counsel in on it. So without having them start to do any work, I think they still, they need to give us an answer on if it's feasible for us to be reimbursed. I mean, I know we got to do the job anyway, but. So 
So I guess, you know, our, we're going to schedule a meeting for next week um, because we have to sign off on the warrant. So um, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to get into paying our town council a ton of money, you know, to, to fight this battle when we, this yeah. isn't really a battle we should have to fight in the first place. This is something that the OPM should stand up and, and stand behind their work on, but it looks like that's the way we're going to have to go. Joanne, uh, how much does Joanne know how much they have in their contingency on this whole project or not? I do. And actually, Christian, do you want to present it or do you want me to? Yeah, I can, I can lay it out here okay. basically because I was asking about this earlier and I was trying to get it out to everybody, but basically right now the total contingency for the project was $369,000, let's say. Um, $37,000 in change orders so far and about another, let's say, $6,000 in change orders besides this big one. Um, so, so that gives them about $325,000 remaining in contingency. And, you know, this one would be 43000 So there is money there. There's just a question of, you know, paying for this, the solar, which they'd like to do on the library and which is reimbursable um, or maybe not 100% reimbursable, but a big chunk of it gets um, as a grant. And so, you know, we're looking at even, uh, even if we were to pay for this, um, you know, at the end of the day, after all the reimbursements, which, which as we were talking about earlier, might be until the next fiscal year, um, might have like 200, you know, 30,000 to 250,000 left in contingency, even with, if we were to do everything. So what if the contingency fund was used in the meantime to cover the 42,000 so we could start work right away and keep moving on this? And in the meantime, we uh, fight the battle with town council and the OPM to get them to cover their screw ups. David? Yep. My concern is 42,000. It just, I mean, I think anyone on here would say that just seems like also, I mean, it's your negotiation to have, I think, but it seems like a lot of money. And, and I know you want to get paid, you know, we'll get paid back and it won't matter, but you know, what happens if that doesn't happen and we didn't negotiate the best price? Well, I think it does need to be negotiated because from what the work is, and Tommy could probably comment better on this, but it seems like it's pretty steep, the price tag for what they're doing. Tommy, do you want to comment about that at all? Yes, especially if, like you said, if they had stopped at, the, at that time. Um, but every time we discussed it with the um, contractor, it was no problem. He was going to rent the equipment that weekend as long as we could get, you know, we had spent a uh, night with the planning board and, and, and talked with them and, and um, they just needed to see a plan and uh, the figures with the green space. But as far as price, I mean, I'm sure it's inflated at, at that, especially when they could, you know, do it themselves and a lot of the loam and all that should have never been, been spread in the first place. I think we, I think we should at our meeting next week, have the OPM appear here. And we can ask him some of these questions. And I think, I think we also should support the library by the select board taking on the legal aspect of chasing these people down to make it happen. Absolutely. I think, I think towards the final payment end, I think this is a negotiating point that we're, we, we need to pay it and get it fixed now. We need to get the pavement down before winter. It, it's it's a time issue right now. And in, in any other contract that we've ever uh, gone through, I know the sewer lines we ran into issues with at one time, David, uh, the uh, senior center, the OPM we've had meetings with, uh, whether, whether they, they – pick up their portion of their failure or whether we have to pay for it. I mean, it's just something we're going to have to deal with on our side, on, on the select board side, I would think. Well, I, I, wait, wait a minute here. I, I think this should come out of their contingency fund right now. I think that that should be above, yeah. well, let's get it before winter flies. Yeah. Take it out of your contingency fund. That's what it's there for. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, we'll go from there. We'll be glad to take this on legally as a select board because that's our job. But that money should come out of the contingency fund, the 42000 or whatever it takes. Um, negotiate a better price with them. Talk to the OPM. Talk to the GC and see if we can get it done be before snow flies here. Yeah, my thought was to take it out of the contingency authorized, you know, say, yes, let's spend the 42,000, but I'm willing to bet when the OPM is uh, actually on the contractor to give some real costs, that 42,000 is going to shrink significantly when he's covering the, the you know, the cost of the work. Yeah. So yeah. It's probably going to be 25,000 by the time it's all said and done. Yeah. I would suggest definitely negotiating that because when we were on site, I mean, Tommy and Chris, you can chime in as well, but, you know, the sidewalk issue that we were talking about, it was going to be a savings to them by redoing, uh, you know, the granite curb because they were yes. going to be able to go into the road rather than all the way out to the sidewalk. And then also with removing the, the green space areas, it was going to be changed to just pavement and putting down line striping. And mm -hmm. the contractor said that, oh, we'll be able to reuse uh, the granite curbing if we have any breakage when we're doing the other portions. So I would, I would just be cautious with, you know, accepting the full amount right now without somebody really doing a review of that. Mm -hmm. so my, my issue is how soon from the library's perspective do we need to move? Because if we say, yes, go ahead and spend the 42,000 and maybe you can start tomorrow on that work, or should we take the time to negotiate a week and you so know, build the project? I think the best person to answer that is actually Linda who does the borrowing. Is she still here? Because she knows, like, you know, the cost of borrowing. So, hi. Okay. So, so what, uh, what's the question specifically, Joanne? I was in between rooms. Basically, so, is, is a week delay going to mess up the borrowing, right? No. No. Uh, when we do the borrowing for the bond, we're borrowing every last dollar for the library because th th there was no question that they were going to spend it all because they're also going to go into their other uh, raised money. So we're borrowing all, all the money anyways. So we'll be set. Okay. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to say too that I'm a little disappointed that the OPM isn't a little more on our side with this issue. I feel like it's our problem to solve a little bit here and that Where's the OPM on fighting for us in this one? Um, and and I'm not quite sure the answer to that question um, because I feel like he should be getting this cost down and working with the contractor to get the cost down and solve this problem for us. And it's a little bit like now we're solving the problem, which just seems like he's not doing his job. So um I'm happy to Does say that right now. I'm happy to say that to him again tomorrow. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. Just make that public, I guess, that um, I am a little disappointed in that and that we're having these issues right now and not finding a resolution. Um, we're, we have money in our contingency, but also we don't want to be mistreated. Where is he? Where is the OPM? I did reach out and never got a call back because I wanted them to try to be uh, available tonight. Yeah. yeah well, have you it's, have you had conversation with him, Mike or Tommy? Not recently. Not recently. Last no. time we spoke was uh, I think a week, at least a week ago. We were at the um, they had the meeting, the weekly meeting. I think it was two weeks weeks ago because we were supposed to do a final inspection that ended up we we had scheduled um, the final inspection of the fire alarm and. Uh, to get a TCO available so that uh, Patrick could start getting um, stuff into the building. And mm -hmm. at the day of that, got, that got canceled for, for some reason. I guess they weren't quite ready. So we do have that, I think, rescheduled now. Um, but, yeah, it was that was the last time we spoke with them. Oh. And, and Dave, you should know that they moved, the OPM moved Carl, our construction supervisor, off the job. So all contact has to go directly to Mark. So before we had someone at least on site and now we do not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Christian, I appreciate what you said and I'm 100% on board. I think it's pretty disgusting the customer service that we've gotten from the OPM. Um, the fact that there's nobody on site to work in the town's best interest 
and the fact that he's okay with just throwing $42,000 at the town and hoping for the best. So I would hope that Zed or whoever else is watching would ask those questions of the OPM and the, the, the company as a whole and the work that there's Again, we, we've, I, got, we've got final payments to all these uh, folks. So I think at the time of the final payments, we need to discuss this and, and have this 42000 or whatever amount it's going to be uh, negotiated into the OPM, the engineering, the uh, architects, right on down the line. Yeah, I, I agree with Christian that um, the OPM has not served the town well. And I'm asking the question of David Nixon or Carolyn, do you have any, I know that you can hold an architect or an engineer um, liable for errors and omissions, but is there any similar thing to the OPM? Because knowing what we did on our project and hearing Mike talk about how the OPM was not contacting him about checking out systems in advance of installation, it just seems like he's not doing his thing. There is a legal concept of uh, a standard of care that applies to designers. Uh, I imagine that it would extend to the OPM as well. The, the OPM is a, uh, a position which is mandated by state law, and uh, it's supposed to be somebody who uh, is with the town shoulder to shoulder from beginning to end, from soup to nuts. Um, mm -hmm. They have they have an obligation to exercise a reasonable standard of care on behalf of their client. Mm -hmm. I'll just go ahead and put it out there so that way the people are aware too. This is D. A. Sullivan and Sons out of Northampton that we're talking about here. It's not the senior center in the North Island Fire Station. So that way we know, you know, who we're having an issue with here. So. Um, all right, so it sounds like we have some time now. Uh, Joanne and um, Allison and Patrick, uh, are, would you be okay with us trying to negotiate this further and then taking a vote on it on the 30th at our meeting uh, since it's not gonna mess up the borrowing? Is that reasonable? I would check with Patrick, it's not a problem. I, mean, I was just gonna say too, I think they're paving, I thought I saw something today, uh, September 21st, they're planning on doing the paving and I don't know how tight that is with um, just, I don't know how those slots are going right now. Cause I know, you know, Thanksgiving is usually when they shut down, but. Um, I think they need to move forward now with a Christian. Yeah. They need to run out of pavement paving time and then we're going to be in trouble for the whole lot for the senior center lot and the library lot. Let's just get it done. Let's, let's just stick, stop dicking around. Let's just get it done. Like we should be getting it done. And then we're going to have a conversation tomorrow with the OPM and tell them we're getting it done, but we want a better price than what they've offered. I also think we should ask for a serious um, time and materials cost for the job so that yeah. when we're negotiating, we have something to work against. Yeah. Well, I mean, basically what it boils down to is uh, whatever this cost, whatever they want to charge, that full amount needs to be reimbursed back to the library, to back to their contingency fund. So if they want to charge, if they want to pay the contractor $42,000 to do the work, then they need to reimburse the library $42,000 to cover that charge. The OPM does, the architect, the engineer, whoever. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that's what it amounts to. The, the library shouldn't lose a penny over this work, yeah. you know, their budget. Yeah, so. and that's what we should make sure that David and Carolyn get in contact with the lawyers tomorrow morning. Okay, so what so I we need should to still I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, have them move forward with this, uh, with them knowing that they're the that we are uh, in uh, uh, conflict with the amount, uh, the price, but that we will you know pay it, but we're still going to have a con. Uh, a conversation with the OPM, GC, and uh, architect. And Joyce, if you could just friendly amendment, uh, allow me to provide the written permission to proceed to the engineer that the uh, planning board asked for last night. They sent an email asking for permission. So if I could get that. Yes. So moved. Yes. Second. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Anybody want to make any last minute comments? Let's get it done. Have them start on it tomorrow. 
Yeah. All, all those in favor. Aye. 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 And then David Nixon, you have a question? Um, it will help Carolyn and me if, uh, if the library trustees could send us copies of the most recent OPM architect and um, construction uh, contracts. I'm sure we have all of those, but uh, just want to make sure that we have the most up-to-date contracts with any amendments. If you could email that to me, that would be great. And to, to Carolyn. And then... One other issue that uh, I think John and Chris had brought up um, while the library committee is here, um, the bushes on the north side, is there, uh, Chris had volunteered to possibly remove those, let the DPW do the work in order to deal with the overhang into the roadway and the lighting and some of those other issues. Um, has there been any talk about that happening? Have we talked to the neighbors? Have we talked to the planning board if that's permitted? We, we thought they were there because, Allison, you can correct me if you're still here, but I thought we had to leave those because of the neighbors. I could be wrong, but that, that was, was my last. That was a question I had, where the property line was, and if that was a uh, privacy fence that you negotiated with Mr. Vakula or not. And are they Mr. Vakula's or are they the town of Hadley's? This did, this did come up for discussion. Sorry. Um, I can put on my video. We're here at the library preparing for our meeting, so we're all masked. Um, anyway, Ms. Patrick, uh, sorry about that. Um, this was discussed during the original site plan, and it's our understanding that essentially the, the boundary between the two properties runs right at those, and so it's really not clear whose they are, but that was part of the agreement that we would leave those there. So. You know, if, if they need to come down for whatever reason, obviously we're going to have to talk to the property owner and have that discussion, but it has not. So who, who do they belong to? I missed that. Who, well, who's, is it on town lot property or is it on we, the We don't know the it's, it's right yeah. on the line. I think it was planted right on the line and that's the reason that the senior center continued the arborvitae yep. planting out through the field so that that line would continue. I do have a suggestion having looked at this recently, it's, and that would be to take the lights from that side and put them on the other side of the driveway, and then they're not hidden in the trees. You could limb up as high as you need to keep the trucks clear and not have the expense of planting new arborvitaes or dealing with the neighbors who say they want a really big one so they'd have the fence because that's where their house and their pool is right now. The problem is they've, they've dug into the roots of those large arborvitaes right now with the new curb they put in. Um, they're not tall enough for the front end loaders for snow removal or the dump trucks. They're going to be hitting the mirrors, breaking the mirrors off, breaking windows because they're up at that about that elevation, you know. They're six, six to eight feet trimmed up, but they look terrible right now the way they are. And the lights, you can't even see them in the trees. Yeah, they're pretty scalped on the library side. So, it's, uh, can we have that conversation with uh, the Vakulas just to see if that's if, if there's a way we can work something out there? Because I think it would would improve the appearance and the lighting ability of those on that entire north side. It, you know, doesn't hurt to ask, I guess. Are you asking us to ask? Uh, or the David to ask? I, I'm willing to go over and talk to him. And I talked to Jane and Jane has spoke with him uh, about the little arborvitaes that they put up on the senior center uh, property line because he wanted a little bit more privacy there on the senior center building so it's, it's up to you, you people what you want to do but i'm making the offer i'll go with john is that okay the loss. great works for us thank you all right i'll be fine okay, okay. anything else from the library any updates you want to give if anybody if, if we can meet and any one of you from the library committee wants to go with us that's fine we can make a date and go over and talk to them We'll get it done now rather than later. Yeah, yeah. I say just do it if you have that ability. Yeah. All right. 
Don't, you don't need a whole gang going over there, John. Just you and Jane go and have a conversation. Okay. That seems better. All right. That's fine. All right. Any, any updates from the library committee before you guys jump into your meeting? We took enough of your time. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you All right. So moving on. Uh, Tommy or Chief Bank Bamble, anything on that? All right, so I'll send the email to the engineer tomorrow saying that uh, from the select board, they're okay to proceed. But uh, please okay. ask for time and materials. Yes, we'll do. Tommy, okay. uh, the, uh, the building inspector, um, are the rest of the issues for the building itself uh, have been addressed? Or? Yes, it, it, interior is moving right along. Um, but like Chief had said, we went over the other day for the alarm and, and um, they weren't ready, no big deal. Just wish they had you know, told us before we showed up to do an inspection and they weren't ready. Um, but that's on, you know, scheduled and all. So interior is looking very good. All right. And are they going to enclose those uh, air handlers in the back also? Or? I don't believe so. No. The drawing they send out shows a fence around them. The one, the current one that's going out with the corrections on it. I will check on that. We can check with them on that. We'll see what it's what they say. Okay, so let's move on to town meeting warrant review, special town meeting warrant review. Can I? David can I just? I'm just going to give a quick, David, David. Go ahead, David. Which David? Um, I'm just going to, David. Uh, I don't know, David Phil. Um, <laughs> I'll take either one. <laughs> I'm just going to do a quick update, and then I'm going to uh, leave the meeting. Um, anyway, the, on the fire substation, um, they're going to be redoing the lawn up there. I do know that Omasta still has plans to do that. Uh, and the fiber optic, uh, contract came in at, uh, 138,000. There was 140,000 that was, um, allocated for that so we came in a little bit under that so we still have some money in our contingency fund um, but at least the fiber optic will be available for all of our town buildings so that will get moved along okay sounds good all right you need uh, to vote on that. all right we'll see say that again you need to vote do we need to vote on, oh i'll i think we already approved the hundred i'll make a motion did we uh, we approved the 140, but it's 138, so we'll just leave it at 140, and anything that's a surplus will go back into the contingency. All right. So my understanding is that you're uh, you're awarding the bid to the uh, contractor listed as the yeah. responsible bidder in that bid. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I'll make a motion to uh, award the contract to. Is it con come? What is it, David? Uh, I'm trying. I don't have my paperwork in front. Contract um, for one hundred thirty-eight thousand. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And, uh, and you said our meeting was next week or the week after, David? We're going to do one on the thirtieth because we have to sign the warrant. <laughs> Okay, the 30th it is, then I'll talk to see you on the 30th. All right, enjoy. Have a good night. All right, thank you. Have All a right. good night. Yep, bye-bye. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, special town meeting warrant review. David, if you want to go ahead. Okay, so the last time we talked about the special town meeting warrant, I gave you a, a overview of where we are financially, uh, both as a state as well as a town. Um, at that time, I said that the state budget had not been completed, and we may be in a position of asking for a deferral on the uh, October 17th date. Uh, so in the meantime, the state has uh, published some critical numbers for the town of Hadley. Uh, the Chapter 70 of the Cherry Sheet and the unrestricted general government aid numbers are now available and the state assessments are available. So we are in a, in a good position with respect to the balanced budget that we passed at the annual town meeting. We're about $37,800 uh, 
to the good. There are other parts of the cherry sheet that we don't know about, such as the pilot payment, the charter school reimbursement, the veterans uh, uh, exemption and the exclusion for the elderly on their taxes. Um, those amounts are probably not going to change significantly. So we're in a position of saying we could go forward with the uh, October 17th special town meeting, even though we don't have a state budget at this point. Uh, we feel confident that we're with, within the margin of error uh, for the other moving parts of the cherry sheet. So, um, Carolyn and I took a look at the uh, general fund revenues um, and expenses today, and we are on track for both. So I don't see anything in the first few months of the fiscal year that would tell me that we're in any kind of trouble. So we're in a good place. So I'm thinking October 17th is okay for us to move forward. Okay. Uh Chief Spankable, do we need a unified command meeting to talk with Randy and discuss, or do you just want to go with the same thing we did for annual town meeting? Uh, we had talked about that today at the department head meeting, and we suggested a unified command. Uh, we're just going to take a overlay of the meeting that was at Hopkins, and we'll put it on Adley Elementary's field. So we had a discussion with uh, the superintendent. She was good with it, but we feel it's an important that everybody gets the flow path and understands how it all is going to work. So okay. yeah, we'll be scheduling that soon. Okay, thanks. This would have, this would have to be an outdoor uh, meeting. There's apparently no space inside the cafeteria at the elementary school for a hundred person special town meeting. Uh, the, the space is occupied with uh, excess furniture from the classrooms. Is there a reason we're not having it in the fields at Hopkins, like the spring meeting? They're all dug up. Yeah, it's a construction site and it's an attractive nuisance. It's just a liability for the town if we uh, if we hold it there. Wasn't there an issue that we have scheduled our town meetings to be at Hopkins and this is not at Hopkins? So long as the warrant spells out where it's going to be uh, held, that'll be okay. Okay. There's, there's no bylaw that requires you to have it at Hopkins. And in fact, we've had the uh, special town meeting at the elementary school back in the past. Are we still able to do the reduced quorum for this meeting? Uh, unclear about that because you have a number of uh, non-budgetary issues that you need to address. Um, for example, the stretch energy code, I don't think that would be al allowable under the reduced quorum requirement. Okay. Well, I, I mean, people did a good job of showing up last time. Obviously, it'll be a little bit cooler. Um, I'm not, I'm so, not for the reduced. What's that? I'm not for the reduced. No, I, I, I think we can get enough people to show up. We did we did okay last time. So yeah, either, either um, matter. You know, you do have we enough room here. between Hopkins and Russell School, don't you? If you wanted to keep it there, they got more room in the cafeteria that way. It looks, it looks like John. I did a, a drive-through yesterday, and it looks like there's some excavation at the drainage pipe between um, Russell School and where the ball field is. Yeah, they they just uncovered that. There, uh, uh, that can be covered back up, and uh, that was just to uh, TV to rotten uh, drain pipes that we have there. It's a matter of six or eight inches, and I think they they plan on covering it up tomorrow or, or by Friday. I personally would suggest if you're okay with doing the elementary school, just because that's really close to the street and just logistically and security wise, I think it's better um, to have it in a more, you know, a little bit further off and there's good access with the uh, back side of the elementary school, there's an actual paved surface that goes right down to where we would set it up. So it would be easy to get, you know, anybody in a wheelchair or anything like that down there. I think logistically it's a little bit easier and there's good parking there as well. All right. So let's just check in with Randy and make sure time's good. We're all on the same page and let's go with the elementary school. I guess. 
So if we could get uh, some recommendations from the select board on some of these articles, that would be very good. And that way you can keep your September 30th meeting as light as possible. I'm just going to walk through the uh, uh, articles, and if you could take a vote, yay or nay, on whether you recommend them or not, that would be very helpful. If you need more time, obviously, we need to give you that up that opportunity to take more time. Do we want to wait until next week when Joyce is here to do this? Because I know that, like, as usual at town meeting, everyone's going to say, well, who was the person that didn't vote and why didn't they on every article? Okay. Your call. Mayor. Let me, let me at least go through the articles that I don't think we need uh, in the anymore. Okay. All right. So Article 3, the Enterprise Fund Budget Adjustment, I don't see any a, job, a need for that article. It looks like our enterprise funds are exactly where we need them to be. Um, so are you saying we shouldn't recommend that one? No. If, you don't need it. So we could get a motion to remove that? So I'll make a motion to remove that article then. I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Article 19, reserved for the planning board for the Green Communities Zoning Bylaw. Uh, the planning board is asked that this be withdrawn. Uh, they're not ready for it and it may not be necessary to qualify for the Green Communities uh, criteria for um, development of uh, solar or uh, renewable energy by right. Okay. I, is Bill there? Could I just ask him? I'll make the mo I don't mind making the motion, but I just wanted to know if we had any, got a letter from the lawyer on that. Not yet. <clears throat> uh, I am uh, going back and forth with them about uh, uh, providing information on what can be done in the industrial district. And uh, they came back with a couple of questions uh, at the end of last week, and my day job got in the way. So uh, I have uh, not been able to get back to them. But we're, we're going back and forth on it. I'm working with uh, Joel Bard and uh, one of his associates. But the, uh, the other part of the issue is that we just don't have enough time to create a new article in time for the fall town meeting. Um, <clears throat> that's a, a months long process. So uh, it came to us too late to even be a starter. Okay, yeah, no, we just wanted to get the ball rolling with you guys. And if we could get it on this town meeting, then great. And you know, we do the next one or when it all works, so. That's fine. I can I can make a motion to remove that article from this morning. All right, I'll second it. Any further discussion? All, right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 18, the planning board article for accepting Megan's Way as a public road. Uh, we've simply run out of time on that one. The, the planning board needs to take a certain statutory uh, uh, steps in the select board as well. Uh, we don't have enough time to, to complete that article, so this should be deferred to another day. If, if, if I could qualify David's comment, that is a petition article. It is not a planning board article. Well taken. Thank you. But even if it's petitioned, we can remove it, correct? Uh-uh. It's, petition by the it's, it's not a, a petition by 10 signatures. And we, it's been on the last, it was on the last warrant as well, and we removed it. So I can make a motion again to remove that from this, arc, this warrant. What is the holdup with it? Can I get a second, please? Before we discuss. I'll second. All right, go ahead, John. What's the holdup with it? The holdup is that the um, the DPW uh, needs to uh, be assured that the uh, road has been constructed to the standards of the day that it was created. Um, and so far as I can tell, the as-built drawings have never been delivered to uh, DPW. 
okay. W therefore is not in a position to make a recommendation to the planning board. And that means that the planning board is not in a position to make a recommendation to the select board. If, so. if I could elaborate a bit there, there was an, there is a, an as built plan and it was delivered to DPW, the DPW director. It, it's the kind of as built plan we have seen and accepted in the past. However, the DPW director did not think that that style of as-built plan satisfied state requirements for Chapter 90 money. And um, so we're sort of going back and forth on that. I've asked him if he could point me to the state regulations, and I haven't seen those yet, but uh, uh, we'll take that up again when we have a little more time. So it's just it's a question of what... Um, what level of detail the town is looking for. Okay. Any so comments? like all the 80s projects and stuff like that, uh, Bill or? The, um, <clears throat> the roadways that we've accepted previously have had as-built plans of the same standard as uh, Megan's Way submitted, but those were, different DPW and highway superintendents. So um, the uh, Chris, Chris um, certainly is indicating that there is, that he's looking for a higher standard. And we're just trying to uh, figure out going forward exactly what that is so that we can address it. Well, if we've accepted them before, I don't see why we can't accept them now. In the future, I would imagine then we would have to go on with a different side, uh, type of plan. Since this project has already been in for how many years now? Uh, two or three years now. Yeah. Um, you know, if if there is again, we're just trying to trying to get to the bottom of it. Uh, if there is a uh, if there is a specific standard that Mass Highway is looking for, that's fine. We'd like to know about it. Um, uh, we had not been aware that there was anything deficient in what we had been doing up to this point. If there is, fine. Let's let's find out what it is. Um, that just seems to be the breakdown at the moment that we just haven't haven't. Uh, close the circle on what it is that DPW is looking for that they aren't seeing in the plan they have. I will uh, make sure that I get with Chris on this and that you get a written answer because uh, I'd like to not see this article again <laughs> or only see it one more time and actually have it make the town meeting floor. One more time would work. Yeah. 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 And, and get it done and over with. Yeah. All right, so uh, could I get a vote on that motion to remove Article 18, please? Aye. 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 All right, I think that's it. There's uh, about five uh, articles from CPA. They're going to be meeting on the 21st, and we'll have a uh, sense of what they're going to approve and what they're not going to. Um, on that note, I'd like to... Uh, have a meeting on September 30th at 5:30 to finalize the warrant and go through the entire warrant and uh, vote on or make our recommendations as the select board. And since we're meeting, we might as well take care of some other business uh, at the same time. And then I'd also like to combine our October 7th meeting. Let me check that date. Yep. October 7th with the, which is a Wednesday, with the public forum session. So we'd start the select board meeting at 5.30 and start the public forum at seven. So we don't have to meet two nights in a row. We can knock it all out in one, if that is uh, acceptable to everybody. And that's, that public forum is gonna be over Zoom. So it'll be in this format and then rebroadcast by Hadley Media like has been done in the past. David. This is the public forum of the, of the preview of the warrant? Yes. Okay. Sounds good to me. Get it all over with in one night. Yeah. All right. 
do we need to vote on that or are we good? Chair sets the agenda. All right, the agenda set. <laughs> okay, so moving on, let's do the uh, cable franchise renewal committee and cable oversight committee. Uh, first up is well, cable franchise renewal committee uh, to help negotiate a new cable franchise agreement for cable television services in Hadley. Current franchise expires in 2024 and it takes three years to go through the formal renewal process. And we have letters of interest or emails from Pat Layton, Betty Faulkner, Carol Norton, Jason Galvin from Hadley Media, uh, myself uh, from the select board and Carolyn Brennan from town, as the town administrator. Uh, Jennifer has something. Um, yes, on Monday morning, um, we received after we posted, we received one more email from a t Tiffany Kellogg Zancho or Zon Zonko, and she's also asking to be appointed to it. She's a resident of the town of Hadley. Um, I'm thinking. David had said this is a long committee. More might be better. Yeah. So um, I was I, I was going to ask if y'all would also include her. Okay. So Tiffany Kellogg, what was it? Z A N C H O. Okay. So that would make uh, basically five members of the community plus myself from the select board, a uh, person from Hadley Media, and Caroline as town administrator. Yes. So if I can get a motion on that appointment. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And next, uh, Hadley Media Oversight. Uh, did we get any interest for that? I, I did not receive a single uh, email or letter of interest from anybody. So Maybe we could see if, once you'll have your first meeting, maybe you might want to see if any of them want to come over. Okay. All right. Um, David, when, when do we need to, or sorry, David or Carolyn, when do we need to start this, uh, this process? When, when, when should we start meeting? Um, I would begin uh, you know, the next couple of months. We have until 2024 before the, the uh, current uh, Franchise agreement expires. Uh, you got to be thinking three years in advance of that um, that uh, that time. Um, so I would I would start uh, you know, two or three months from now and start thinking about the strategic uh, uh, long term goals for uh, serving the uh, the community by uh, Hadley Media. So we will. Uh let's wait until after town uh, special town meeting to do that. So we'll work, start on this in November and we can start meeting then working toward that. That way we get town meeting out of the way. Um, and then we can always put back out the Hadley media oversight and see if we can find some more people. So um, let's see. Uh, Good. Uh, I got a couple of questions. I don't know whether public comment or at the end here. Uh, one about the appointment town hall opening. Didn't we vote to uh, open the people could come to the town hall that wanted to pay? Can we touch on that issue a little bit? Yeah, it was after the election, so I believe November so, 3rd. November election or the primary election? That's That was the confusing part. I thought it was the November election, but I'm not sure. The public thought it was the primary, but if we're looking at November, then we need to just let everybody know. David, did, do you recall what that vote was, or Jennifer? I believe it was after the election. I believe it, the intent was the uh, national election. And I can absolutely maybe do a new, a new uh, update on the town's front page letting people know and just reminding them that we are here, we are working and we are available through phone and email and the drop box is, is busy all day long. Yeah. Well, we have a reopening plan, which is based upon certain performance measures. So uh, we can do a check-in and um, 
and make sure we're we're doing everything that we need to do to protect both the public and ourselves. David, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, if I remember, tax bills were due shortly after the day after the uh, national election. So that's what, uh, you know, would have been the last minute chance for people to come in and pay in person at the collector's office if they if they needed to. So that was the thought there. Um, Perhaps she can set up at the senior center when voting is happening there. Yeah. And so while we're on this subject, uh, Jane, you wanted to talk about reopening uh, or meeting in person, I should say. Um, so we, the select board had said that uh, meetings would still continue by Zoom and we would revisit it for October on meetings. And I bring you news from Haley that she is happy to let town meetings happen at the senior center. We have the space and the um, ability to meet with up to 35 people. Any comments from anybody on that? I think we should definitely just talk to the Board of Health, see what they think. Um, and uh, I honestly don't know what the governor's uh, guidelines are for meetings right now in person. I don't know if anybody else knows that off the top of their head. I think Dr. Moser was on here. I'm not sure if she still is, but. No, not anymore. Um, but definitely open to the discussion, just, you know, getting the buy-in from everybody and making sure we, we do it correctly. Yeah, we Let's put it on the next agenda. Yeah, we did one with the, for the administrator and it seemed to work well as long as we're not going to have that big of a turnout. I don't see there's plenty of room where we had met for now. I know we can't meet in the town hall because of the size of the rooms. But. I know we invested a, a lot in technology in the senior center. So do we have a way to do uh, kind of like a simulcast meeting where somebody could join, elect to join a meeting via Zoom, but people that want to meet in person can meet in person? John is here and he can answer that from Hadley Media. Unless he's outside. So I'm going to answer it. I'm going to jump in there. Um, we, we flirted really hard on the line when we did the town administrator meeting with in person versus the Zoom. Um, there was some technical difficulties with Hadley Media and the broadcasting. So there was a delay. And um, thankfully, it was a friendly audience watching that night on the Zoom meeting. And it was nobody who had any complaints. But open, open meeting law, it was, it was very tricky. And I was very concerned because they were watching through a delay on there. And so they couldn't comment. They couldn't participate. It wasn't it wasn't what a true open meeting is. So we would have to make sure that that was running absolutely spot on correctly for them to be able to participate. Is John on or not? Well, Hadley can be on, but I don't know if, if John's available. So why don't we have this conversation with Hadley Media, see what we can work out technology-wise, and then we can yeah. put this on the agenda for next week and uh, have, make a better informed decision. You keep uh, saying next week, but we're really talking two weeks, right? Uh, the 30th. Two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks, sorry. Apologize. Um, okay, and David, you had some issues that were business not anticipated? Yeah, just a couple of things. Um, uh, I thought that uh, the building inspector was going to talk about a, uh, a, a loam issue over at the Hopkins Academy. Oh, I can talk to that. That was brought up at planning board last night, but he's here. Yeah. Okay. Yes, basically, I, I've spoken again today with the um, uh, Carlos from Berkshire Design, and it is in the um, Two spots it is that it does have to go and at the expense of the contractor to the DPW or where the board would like it to be brought. So I, I guess basically it was just the contractor asking if they could take half the loan and bring half to the town. So I could run that by the board if, if they thought 
they'd like to do that or the, the contract does read that it all goes to the town where, you know, they can use it is what both um, Scott and Chris have said. I mean, Loam is big money. So the idea of giving it away, I, I mean, that's, first of all, we're not supposed to be allowing our Loam topsoil, whatever, to be out of town without a planning board permit, I believe. Yep. And second, we're, that's a lot of money. So, it, you know, if anything, if we had extra, I think it should be put up for bid and see who wants to buy it. Uh, how, how many how many yards are we talking? Do you have any idea? They're, they're saying 400. Um, you know, they were wanted to take two and give two, which I, you know, until we did the research that it was actually in the contract that it's supposed to, at their expense, we don't have, we don't have to use our trucks nor our loaders. Um, they did, however, say that if they needed to push it at the yard to help get the trucks in, they would have a, the town could provide, you know, a loader at that site. I mean, 400 yards alone, that's, that's pretty big money. I mean, yeah, there's, there's room at the yard for it. So can we give them a lesser amount for their labor to get it there and then have them not use town trucks and town labor? No, there's no, the town won't have any expense in the contract. They are supposed to provide it. They're responsible. It's kind of a shot in the dark, dark for the contractor to try to get some of our loans. So basically what we found this afternoon in, in the contract, two spots in the plan, it is, um, you know, their requirement. So I mean, I, actually, my suggestion is just let them deliver it like it's supposed to be. Sounds good. And we'll make sure that DPW is there to push it around or put it where it needs to go. Just dump it for us, David. What else did you have? Uh, we've got a call from the uh, town of Amherst. They're going to be doing water line work on West Pomeroy Lane. They asked for a uh, road closed sign to be placed next week at uh, the intersection of Moody Bridge and South Maple Street, so that people don't turn into a construction uh, area and uh, t uh, on the, uh, across the town line in areas. Okay. I talked to Chris Okafor, he's okay with it. Do we use the police sign or? That's at the end of Moody Bridge, right? Yeah. So just need a motion to approve that sign. Can make a motion to approve that. Uh Put a road close sign on, I forget where you said, South Maple and Moody Bridge. Yep. I'll second. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, David, when you go back to Amherst, could you um, just prod them for a follow up on our sewer conversation? Yep. Thank you. Um, anything else, David? Uh, I think that's all the big stuff for right now. Uh, Carolyn and I are working very well together. I'm very happy to report her as the new town administrator, just to make it official to everybody. I'm now the deputy town administrator. So if you uh, have any need to work with a town administrator, go to Carolyn and she'll fix you up just fine. All right, so let's just go through uh, real quick. Um, we'll do liaison updates before we adjourn. So uh, Jane, do you wanna give a, your update first? Okay, everybody probably knows the school committee has worked very, very hard on figuring out the opening schedule, which started or is starting this week. Um, and I just have to give them all credit for the number of hours they've met and all the things that they have considered in terms of what's best for the town. And Moving forward, we're starting mostly with remote learning. A few people will be on site, but in general remote, and then they'll keep checking the metrics and see how that will move. Okay. Christian, did you have anything? We already talked a bunch about the library, so nothing there. Town hall, I unfortunately missed the uh, department head meeting because I had another meeting with uh, my day job that conflicted with that one. So I don't know if we're gonna do the town administrator report, but uh, see if uh, David or Carolyn has any updates um, from that meeting. And the only last thing I wanted to bring up was uh, affordable housing and just, uh, you know, 
I know we have that lawsuit going on. I believe it's with Winfield um, or possibly some litigation happening there. But, um, you know, while David is um, in this deputy role, I don't know if there's anything we can work on to kind of just um, set, set some foundation work for negotiating more affordable units at existing um, complexes in Hadley right now. So that would be my only other thing to think about that uh, the uh, Affordable Housing and Economic Development Committee has been pondering over. Okay. Um, for DPW, uh, I'll just put this out there that uh, 21st through the 24th, dep weather dependent, uh, all the street lines will be restriped in town as long as it's not raining. And uh, West Street, all of West Street, both sides, north and south, will be uh, milled and paved, um, hopefully before Thanksgiving when the asphalt plants shut down. So there's be a lot of work going on there. And then Moody Bridge from Bay Road to the Silvio Conti um, entrance will be paved as well. That portion, I believe, is using federal grant funds for that paving portion. Uh, the DPW has been replacing water lines and raising structures and getting the road ready for that paving for a couple weeks now. And then the last update is, um, I don't know if I mentioned this last time or not, but uh, myself, John Weskevitz, David Nixon, um, and, and several other, Chris Okafer, uh, we all had a good meeting with the Amherst uh, DPW director, Guilford Mooring, and uh, some of his engineering staff. And we're looking at options to possibly take care of our sewer expansion problems in the future by sending our wastewater to Amherst, uh, possibly at a cheaper rate than what we can do ourselves and possibly avoiding a uh, you know, 10 or $15 million plant expansion that may be needed in the future. So it's a, it's a work in progress and it's gonna be a while, but we're working on options. Uh, along with a mutual negotiation, they're, they're interested in our water and, and we, we do have the two uh, Mount Warner wells that are capable of being filtered and uh, and produce quite a bit of water out of those two wells. So. That is true. John, do you have any other updates? For me? Or are you good? No, I, I have not contacted the uh, park and rec, but uh, th there's not much going on there. There's no activities. So. Okay. David or Carolyn, do you have anything before we close it up? You're muted, Carolyn. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, just to give an update, Christian, because you weren't at the meeting, it really was um, basically going over just some um, some in-house issues and uh, get for me to get to know all of the staff. So most of it, you probably would have um, no surprises or any learned anything really new. Um, it was really a chance for me to get to know kind of where everybody was at in their department. So um, I, I can't think of anything else, David, regarding the department head meeting. But I, I do want to thank you, too, for letting David um, kind of step in for me, having only been here 19 hours now. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, the only other thing that I have is that uh, a couple of years back, the, uh, uh, FEMA approached us about the redo of the uh, flood insurance maps. The flood insurance maps for Hadley were done back in the 1960s, I believe, and they were done to a 20-foot contour. So in the areas of Hadley, that would be flooded in a 100-year storm and a 500-year storm. FEMA has redone those maps with a two-foot contour, and they uh, provided uh, uh, previews of those maps to the planning board stock board and the conservation commission knowing areas that would be affected by 100 year and 500 year floods uh as well as other kinds of water events um we gave them comments back and told them that they needed to redesign certain portions of their flooded uh 
depictions of flooding in uh, Hadley. Uh, they have incorporated those uh, those comments into a final design, as well as a series of rec uh, regulations. These need to be adopted by the town at the next town meeting. That would be the annual town meeting. Uh, so this is going to involve a lot of work with the planning board, conservation commission, the inspections department, and the select board. And we'll we'll uh, start working on that in the next uh, couple of weeks. It'll take several months for us to get through that. Uh, David, generally our flood area has expanded is my understanding, correct? Correct. All right, so that may, you know, people should pay close attention because the areas that will, that may require flood insurance by mortgage lenders and things like that could be increasing. So, all right, if anybody has anything else, otherwise if I could get a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. See everybody on the 30th. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Carolyn. Thank you. You're welcome.